Hello, my name is Dr. Harry Augenson, director of the Widener Observatory. I'll be your host for the Night Sky Rundown for October, where we will tell you about what's up in the night sky this month. Hello, my name is Joanne Klein. I'll be your co-host. October evenings provide the ideal setting for a parade of autumn constellations. Most of the stars of spring and summer are gone, but the increasingly early nightfall allows a few of them to still be seen. The spring's orange gold Arcturus, the fourth brightest star in the night sky, sets low in the west-northwest around 845 at midmonth. And summer's reddish-orange Ontarius, which marks the heart of Scorpius, remains visible, though quite low in the southwest throughout October. Another holdover is the summer triangle of the three bright stars Vega, Deneb, and Altair, which is just west of the overhead by 8 p.m. in mid-October. All three of these stars will remain up until well after midnight in October. By 10 or 11 p.m., the stars of autumn have the celestial stage all to themselves. High in the northeast is the easily recognizable W shape of the constellation Cassiopeia, the queen of ancient Ethiopia. The W opens up toward Polaris, the north star. The great square of Pegasus, a box consisting of four stars, is high in the south-southeast at about the same time and is the most distinctive landmark of autumn nights. Below Pegasus, about midway up in the south, is the zodiac constellation Aquarius, the water bearer. Aquarius is the second largest constellation of the zodiac, after Virgo, but its stars are relatively faint. Sitting directly under Aquarius in the south-southeast is the whitest star Fomalot, the brightest star in the otherwise dim constellation Pisces Astrunus, the southern fish. Rising in the east is Aries, the zodiacal constellation of the ram, marked by its two brightest stars, Hamal and Sheraton. Rising in the southeast is the constellation Cetus, the whale. Cetus is the fourth largest constellation in the sky, but it contains mostly faint stars. The exceptions are Difta on the western side of the constellation and Menkar on the eastern side. Venus continues its slow ascent into the evening sky, resembling a very bright star low in the west after sunset. It sets only about an hour after the sun at the beginning of October, but two hours after, after it on Halloween night. By late November, Venus will be a truly magnificent beacon in the western sky at dusk. Mars and Saturn, along with the star Antares, stand very low in the southwest at nightfall. Mars glows like a bright orange ember far to the left of similarly colored Antares and cream-colored Saturn. Mars is brighter than either Saturn or Antares, but it is slowly fading. It sets around 1045 Eastern Daylight Time in mid-October. Saturn sets past 9.30 p.m. Eastern Daylight Time on the 1st, but only a little after, a little before 8 p.m. on Halloween night. By Thanksgiving, Saturn will have vanished into the twilight glow. Jupiter reaches conjunction with the sun at the end of September, and as October opens, it is still too close to the sun to detect against the bright twilight. Jupiter will start to reappear in the pre-dawn sky by mid-October. Mercury reaches morning elongation with the sun on September 28th. And as October opens, Mercury is still rising a generous 90 minutes before the sun, making this an opportune time to view the elusive planet. Look for it as a bright star-like point low above the eastern horizon about 30 minutes before sunrise. Mercury passes close to Jupiter on October 11th and a few days later vanishes into the dawn glare. For more information on the night sky, visit the Widener Observatory stargazing website shown below. And that is all we have for this month's segment of Night Sky Rundown. I'm your host, Dr. Harry Augenson. And I'm your co-host, Joanne Klein. Thank you again, Dr. Augenson, for joining us on Pride Time. Don't forget to look at the stars. And back to Andrew.